Hello, welcome to another video. At first, when you see a problem like this, you go, why would they combine differentiation with integration? One undoes the other. Um, I'm just going to leave this as my answer. Oh, but you have boundaries. So what am I supposed to do with this? Well, this is a refresher for those who know the fundamental theorem of calculus. And those who don't know the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is an introduction. Okay, um, this is the topic you do in Calculus 1 that introduces to you the transition or the connection between differentiation and integration. Okay, you know, differentiation, we talk about instantaneous change, but when you talk about integration, you're accumulating the changes. But there is a connection, and it is this theorem that helps you um, understand it. So, in case you've forgotten, let me remind you what it is. Part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus clearly says that if you have a function, say you have f of t, just as we have in this case, and you integrate f of t with respect to t, and then you have a boundary where the, the lower boundary is a constant, let's call it a, and the upper boundary is a function of x. I'm going to call that function of x, say g of x. Okay, remember this g of x could be just x, it could be x squared, could be x minus 5, could be... As long as it's a function of x, once you have this expression, if you take the derivative of this, all you're going to get will be this function, but now in terms of g of x. Okay, multiplied by the derivative of g of x. This is the part that many students do not realize that when you differentiate this, this is what you get. Because what most students see is they just see x. Let me explain to you. So let's say this expression was d dx of the integral from say 1. So this doesn't matter as long as it's a constant, it's not a variable. From 1 to x of let's say f of t dt. What you have here usually turns out to be this same thing. This function replaces t, so it's going to be f of x. And then you multiply by the derivative of x, but the derivative of x is 1. So most students stop here and think that all they have to do is put this number, I mean this function here, and that's the answer. But no, you have to multiply by the derivative of the function sitting on top. So that is the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. There's part two, which is actually, which stems from part one, but part one is the part you want to focus on. And let's just use this to solve this. It's easy, straightforward. So here, what we have is this is going to be equal to, we applied the same rule, we just have to, because this is a constant, okay? The number here is seven. So any number could be here. You can't have a constant here. The constant has to be here. You have to have a function of x here, and you have to have a constant here, okay? In other videos, I have another video that explains this. So this is going to be what? We're going to replace t with this entire function. So here, we're going to have this to be sine 3. The t will be replaced by 2x cubed squared. You see that the t has been replaced, and then you have to multiply this by the derivative of this, which is the derivative of 2x cubed, this way. So what do we have? We have sine 3 times the square of this is going to be 4x to the 6th, times the derivative of this, which is going to be, um, that's going to be 6x squared. So that's what we have. Now we multiply this by this. Our final answer is going to be 6x squared, and then we distribute what's in here. What do we get? We get 12, 6x squared sine 12x to the 6th. Interesting. And that's what you get. Now, you might ask a question. Is it possible for me to first integrate this and then differentiate? 
Well, if you know how to integrate this, go ahead. But I think you don't know how to integrate it. That's why you're watching this video. You can't integrate this because this actually is not the derivative of any elementary function that you know. So there'll be some special skill which is far beyond your level at this point. So don't try to integrate first before you differentiate. All you have to do is use the fundamental theorem of calculus. That was why the question was set this way. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.